Welcome, brothers and sisters. Welcome to the number 316, November 12th, on this gorgeous sunset. We're going to be reading from Ezekiel 24 1 through 26 21. <coughs> Excuse me. On January 15th, during the ninth year of King Jehoiakim's captivity, this message came to me from the Lord, Son of Man. <coughs> Write down today's date, because on this very day, the king of Babylon is beginning his attack against Jerusalem. Then give these rebels an, an illustration with this message from the Sovereign Lord. <coughs> Put a pot on the fire and pour in some water. Fill it with choice pieces of meat the rump and the shoulder, and all the most tender cuts. Use only the best sheep from the flock and heap fuel on the fire beneath the pot. Bring the pot to a boil and cook the bones along with the meat. Now, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. What sorrow awaits Jerusalem, the city of murders? She is a cooking pot whose corruption can't be cleaned out. <coughs> Take the meat out in random order, for no piece is better than the other. For the blood of her murders is splashed on the rocks. It isn't even spilled on the ground where the dust could cover it. So I will splash her blood on a rock for all to see, an expression of my anger and vengeance ag against her. <coughs> This is what the Sovereign Lord says, What sorrow awaits Jerusalem, the city of murders? I myself will pile up the fuel beneath her. Yes, heap on the wood. Let the fire roar to make the pot boil. Cook the meat with many spices and afterward burn the bones. <coughs> now set the empty pot on the coals, heated red hot. Burn away the filth and corruption, but it's, hope, but it's hopeless. The corruption can be cleaned out, so throw it into the fire. Your impurity is your lewdness and the corruption of your idolatry. <coughs> I tried to cleanse you, but you refused. So now you will remain in your filth until your fury against you has been satisfied. I, the Lord, have spoken. <coughs> the time has come, and I won't hold back. I will not change my mind, and I will have no pity on you. You will be judged on the basis of all your wicked actions, says the Sovereign Lord. Then this message came to me from the Lord, Son of Man. With one blow, I will take away your dearest treasure. Yet, you must not show any sorrow at her death. Do not weep. Let there be no tears. Groan silently or silently. <coughs> but let there be no wailing at her grave. Do not uncover your head or take off your sandals. Do not perform the usual rituals of mourning or accept any food brought to you by consoling friends. So I proclaimed this to the people the next morning, and in the evening my wife died. The next morning I did everything I had been told to do. Then the people asked, what does all this mean? What are you trying to tell us? So I said to them, a message came to me from the Lord, and I was told to give this message to the people of Israel. This is what the Sovereign Lord says, I will defile my temple the source of your security and pride, the place your heart delights in. Your sons and daughters whom you left behind in Judah will be slaughtered by the sword. Then you will do as Ezekiel has done. You will not mourn in public or console yourselves by eating the food brought by friends. Your heads will remain covered and your sandals will not be taken off. You will not mourn or weep but you will waste away because of your sins. You will groan among 
yourselves for all the evil you have done. Ezekiel is an example for you. You will do just as he has done. And when that time comes, you will know that I am the sovereign Lord. Then the Lord said to me, Son of man, on the day I take away their stronghold, their joy and glory, their heart's desire, their dearest treasure, I will also take away their sons and daughters. And on that day a survivor from Jerusalem will come to you in Babylon and tell you what has happened. And when he arrives, your voice will suddenly return so you can talk to him, and you will be a symbol for these people. Then they will know that I am the Lord. Then this message came to me from the Lord, Son of Man. Turn and face the land of Ammon and prophesy against its people. Give the Ammonites this message from the Sovereign Lord. Hear the word of the Sovereign Lord. Because you cheered when my temple was defiled, mocked Israel in her desolation, and laughed at Judah as she went away into exile, I will allow nomads from the eastern deserts to overturn, <coughs> to overrun your country. They will set up their camps among you and pitch their tents on your land. They will harvest all your fruit and drink the milk from your livestock. And I will turn the city of Rabbah into pasture for camels and all the land of the Ammonites into a resting place for sheep and goats. Then you will know that I am the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says, Because you clapped and danced and cheered with the glee at the destruction of my people, I will raise my fist of judgment against you. I will give you as plunder to many nations. I will cut you off from being a nation and destroy you completely. Then you will know that I am the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says, because the people of Moab have said that Judah is just like all the other nations. I will open up their eastern flank and wipe out their glorious frontier towns. Beth, Jeshimoth, Baal, Meon, and Kiriathim. And I will hand Moab over to nomads from the eastern deserts, just as I handed over Ammon. Yes, the Ammonites will no longer be counted among the nations. In the same way, I will bring my judgment down on the Moabites. Then they will know that I am the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. The people of Edom have sinned greatly by avenging themselves against the people of Judah. Therefore, says the Sovereign Lord, I will raise my fist of judgment against Edom. I will wipe out its people and animals with the sword. I will make a wasteland of everything from Teman to Dedan. I will accomplish this by the hand of my people of Israel. They will carry out my vengeance with anger. And Edom will know that this vengeance is from me. I, the Sovereign Lord, have spoken. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. The people of Philistia have acted against Judah out of bitter revenge and long-standing contempt. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. I will raise my fist of judgment against the land of the, Philist of the Philistines. I will wipe out the Kirithites and utterly destroy the people who live by the sea. I will execute terrible vengeance against them to punish them for what they have done. And when I have inflicted my revenge, they will know that I am the Lord. On February 3rd, during the 12th year of King Jehoiakim's captivity, this message came to me from the Lord. Son of man, Tyre has rejoiced over the fall of Jerusalem, saying, Ha! Huh, she was the gateway to the rich trades routes to the east, No. <clears throat> she who was the gateway to the rich trade routes to the east has been broken, and I am the and I am the heir. Because she has been made desolate, I will become wealthy. Therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says I am your enemy, O Tyre, and I will bring many nations against you. 
like the waves of the sea crashing against your shoreline. They will destroy the walls of Tyre and tear down it, its towers. I will scrape away its soil and make it a bare rock. It will be just a rock in the sea, a place for fishermen to spread their nets. For I have spoken, says the Sovereign Lord. Tyre will, Tyre will become the prey of many nations and its mainland villages will be destroyed by the, by the sword. Then they will know that I am the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. From the north I will bring King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon against Tyre. He is king of kings and brings his horses, chariots, charioteers, and great army. First he will destroy your mainland villages. Then he will attack you by building a siege wall, constructing a ramp, and raising a roof of shields against you. He will pound your walls with battering rams and demolish your towers with sledgehammers. The hooves of his horses will choke the city with dust, and the noise of the charioteers and chariot wheels will shake your walls as they storm through your broken gates. His horsemen will trample through every street in the city, they will butcher your people, and your strong pillars will topple. They will plunder all your riches and merchandise and break down your walls. They will destroy your lovely homes and dump your stones and timbers and even your dust in the sea. I will stop the music of your songs. No more will the song of will the sound of harps be heard among your people. I will make your island a bare rock, a place for fishermen to spread their nets. You will never be rebuilt, for I, the Lord, have spoken. Yes, the Sovereign Lord has spoken. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to Tyre. The whole coastland will tremble at the sound of your fall as the screams of the wounded echo in the continuing slaughter. All the seaport rulers will step down from their thrones and take off their royal robes and beautiful clothing. They will sit on the ground trembling with, with horror at your destruction. Then they will wail for you, singing this funeral song. O oh, famous island city, once ru ruler of the sea, how you have been destroyed, your people, with their naval power, once spread fear around the, the world. Now the coastlands tremble at your fall. The islands are dismayed as you disappear. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. I will make Tyre an uninhabited ruin like many others. I will bury you beneath the terrible waves of enemy attack. Great seas will, shall, will, will swallow you. I will send you to the pit to join those who descended there long ago. Your city will lie in ruins, buried beneath the earth, like those in the pit who have entered the world of the dead. You will have no place of respect here in the land of the living. I will bring you to a terrible end, and you will exist no more. You will be looked for, but you will never again be found. I, the Lord, no, I, the Sovereign Lord, have spoken. Hebrews 11, 1 through 16. Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. Through their faith, the people in days of old earned a good reputation. By faith, we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command. That what we now see, no, that what we now see did not come from anything that can be seen. It was by faith that Abel brought a more acceptable offering to God than Cain did. Abel's offering gave evidence that he was a righteous man and God showed his approval of his gifts. Although Abel is long dead, he still speaks to us by his example of faith. 
It was by faith that Enoch was taken up to heaven without dying. He disappeared because God took him. For before he was taken up, he was known as a person who pleased God. And it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. It was by faith that Noah built a large boat to save his family from the flood. He obeyed God, who warned him about things that had never happened before. By his faith, Noah condemned the rest of the world, and he received the righteous that comes by faith. No, he received the righteousness that comes by faith. It was by faith that Abraham obeyed when God called him to leave home and go to another land that God will give him as his inheritance. He went without knowing where he was going. And even when he reached the land God promised him, he lived there by faith. For he was like a foreigner living in tents. And so did Isaac and Jacob, who inherited the same promise. Abraham was confidently looking forward to a city with eternal foundations, a city designed and built by God. It was by faith that even Sarah was able to have a child. Though she was barren and was too old, she believed that God would keep his promise. And so a whole nation came from this one man who was, a good, who was as good as dead, a nation with so many people that like the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore, there is no way to count them. All these people died still believing what God has promised them. They did not receive what was promised, but they saw it all from a distance and welcomed it. And welcomed it. They agreed that they were foreigners and nomads here on earth. Obviously, people who say such things are looking forward to a country they, call, they can call their own. If they had longed for the country they came from, they could have gone back. But they were looking for a better place, a heavenly homeland. That is why God is not ashamed to be called their God, for He has prepared a city for them. Psalm 110, 1 through 7. The Lord said to my, to my Lord, Sit in the place of honor at my, right, at my right hand until I humble your enemies, making them a footstool under your feet. The Lord will extend your powerful kingdom from Jerusalem. You will rule over your enemies. When you go to war, your people will serve you willingly. You are arrayed in holy garments, and your strength will be renewed each day like the morning dew. The Lord has taken an oath and will not break his vow. You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. The Lord stands at your right hand to protect you. He will strike down many kings when his, when his anger erupts. He will punish the nations and fill their lands with corpses. He will shatter heads over the whole earth, but he himself will be refreshed from brooks along the way. He will be victorious. Proverbs 27, 14. A loud and cheerful greeting early in the morning will be taken as a curse. Well, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this incredible view. What a sunset. And it's still going on. So, guys, I will see you tomorrow. God bless you.